Good morning students. This is lecture number 37. Uh, the title of this lecture is some theorems and definitions related to the game theory. We will see that there are a number of mathematical relations uh, which are used to define the behavior of the payoff matrix. So, let us look at the first theorem which says that let f x y be such that both maximum over x minimum over y e x y and minimum over y maximum over x e x y exist. Then the inequality holds that is maximum over x minimum over y e x y is less than or equal to minimum over y maximum over x e x y. Now, you will realize that this happens when we have a saddle point and that saddle point is uh, uh, satisfying this inequality. I mean if the saddle point is not there, uh, when the saddle point is there then that is a equality, but if the saddle point does not hold then the inequality holds. Now, based on this theorem we can also have a corollary uh, which says that let a i j be a m by n matrix then the maximum over i minimum over j a i j is less than or equal to minimum over j maximum over i a i j. What does this mean? This a i j is the matrix which is defining the game when you have a two player game. So, this is the payoff matrix and the inequality holds for the a i j's that is the max min is less than or equal to min max and remember that max is over i and min is over j. <coughs> so, here comes a definition a point x naught y naught x naught belong to R n and y naught belong to R n is said to be a saddle point of f x y if the following condition holds that is f of x y naught is less than or equal to f of x naught y naught is less than or equal to f x naught y. Remember what is the saddle point we have discussed this in the previous lecture saddle point is the max min and uh, min max. So, if the max min and min max are both same, same uh, then it is said to be a saddle point and if this condition does not hold that is if they are not equal then the uh, uh, conditions of the previous theorem they hold and accordingly uh, for the uh, point x naught y naught it is said to be a saddle point if uh, this condition holds for the uh, x naught and y naught belonging to R n. So, here is the theorem 2 let f of x y be such that both max x and min y of f x y and min max of f y f x y where the min is over y and max is over x. If they both exist then the necessary and the sufficient condition for the existence of a saddle point x naught y naught of f x y is that f of x naught y naught is equal to maximum over x minimum over y f x y is equal to minimum over y maximum over x f x y you need not worry about the uh, proof uh, although if you are interested you can look at the literature uh, for the proofs of these theorems. Uh, here is a corollary based on the theorem 2 as before let a i j be a m by n matrix then the necessary and the sufficient condition that a i j has a saddle point at i is equal to r 
and j is equal to s is that a r s is equal to maximum over i minimum over j a i j is equal to minimum over j maximum over i a i j. Now, the corollaries uh, for the theorem 1 and the theorem 2 uh, tells you that for the generalized function that is stated in the theorem, uh, the results hold when we have the payoff matrix of the game theory. So, now let us look at the games without saddle points and uh, they are also called the mixed strategy games and in this situation uh, we have the two players A and B and the vectors given by x is equal to x1, x2, xn of non-negative numbers such that their sum is unity is defined as the mixed strategies of A. And similarly, the vector y given by y1, y2, yn of non-negative numbers such that their sum is equal to unity is defined as the mixed strategies of B. The mixed strategy x whose ith component is unity and all other components are 0 is a pure strategy of A. And similarly, the mixed strategies y whose jth component is unity and all other components are 0 is the pure strategy of B. So, based on these definitions, uh, it is obvious to note that the mixed strategies are the generalization of the pure strategies. Now, coming to the definition of the mathematical expectation or the payoff function, it is denoted by capital E x y uh, in the game whose payoff matrix is given by A is equal to A i j is defined like this summation over i, summation over j, x i, a i j, y j, where i goes from 1 to m and j goes from 1 to n, because in general we have a m by n matrix A, which is defining the payoff. This can also be written in the vector notation as x dash a y. Now, here x and y are the mixed strategies of the two players let us say p 1 and p 2 and uh, the a i j matrix as I said is the uh, matrix corresponding to the uh, uh, strategies of the a and b the payoff of the a and b. So, if the maximum over x and minimum over y expected value of x comma y is equal to minimum over y maximum over x expected value of x comma y is equal to e x naught comma y naught then x naught y naught is called the strategic saddle point of the game. That is to say that this is the best strategy uh, which the bo both the players should use that is uh, x 0 and y 0 is the uh, strategic saddle point of the game. Also x naught y naught are called the optimal strategies and the function value uh, that is expected value of x naught y naught also we denote it by v is called the value of the game. Now, let us look at an example here you can see that the uh, there are two players p 1 and p 2. So, p 1 has the two strategies 1 and 2 and p 2 has the two strategies 1 and 2. Now, this is a 2 by 2 uh, game and we have to write down the row minimum and the row and the column maximum to find out whether there is a uh, saddle point to this game or not. Now, let us look at the first strategy for the player p 1 and here we find that uh, 5 and 1 says that the minimum is 1. So, we will write it in the third uh, the last column that is the row minimum column. Similarly, when the 
P 1 the player 1 is uh, looking at the strategy 2 that is i is equal to 2 then we have to look at 3 and 4 and the minimum is 3. Then we have to pick out the maximum of both these entries. So, max min this gives us 3. On the other hand the same thing we have to do for the player p 2 and we find that out of 5 and 3 maximum is 5 because we are writing the column maximum and similarly for the second one that is if p 2 uses the strategy j is equal to 2 then between 1 and 4 the maximum is 4 and then we have to look at which of them is the minimum. So, min max and this comes out to be 4 and what do we find? We find that 4 is not equal to 3. So, therefore, this game does not have a saddle point. Uh, yeah, I have written it again that is max min of a i j is 3 and min max of a i j is 4. So, there is no saddle point to this game. Now, let us look at the uh, strategies of P 1 the mixed strategies of P 1 uh, let it be denoted by capital X which is equal to X 1 and X 2 and similarly let the mixed strategies of the player 2 be Y 1 and Y 2. Then by the definition of the expected value uh, E of X comma Y is equal to x dash a y which in the vector notation can be written as x 1 x 2 multiplied by 5 1 3 4 multiplied by y 1 y 2. Where did this 5 1 3 4 come from? It came from the data that is given over here 5 1 3 4. So, this is the payoff matrix and in order to define the matrix multiplication we need to write x 1 x 2 as the row and y 1 y 2 as the column. So, that the multiplication is defined. Now, when you do the multiplication uh, this is what you get you get 5 x 1 y 1 plus 3 x 2 y 1 plus x 1 y 1 plus 4 x 2 y 2. So, I want you to please check the calculations and uh, we also know that x 1 plus x 2 should be equal to 1 and y 1 plus y 2 should be equal to 1. These are the conditions that we already uh, they must be satisfied. So, what we will do is we will use these conditions that is x 2 is equal to 1 minus x 1 and y 2 is equal to 1 minus y 1 and we will substitute it into the expected value expression. So, uh, this expression is the one that I got in the, the previous slide yeah that one 5 x 1 y 1 plus 3 x 2 y 1 plus x 1 y 1 plus 4 x 2 y 2. So, we will substitute in place of x 2 we will substitute 1 minus x 1 and in place of uh, uh, we will open this out uh, in place of x 2 we will substitute 1 minus x 1 and similarly for y 2 we will uh, replace it by 1 minus y 1. And when you simplify this you should get the following expression please check this again check the calculations you should get 5 of x 1 minus 1 by 5 y 1 minus 3 by 5 plus 17 by 5. Now, as you know that the value of x 1 should lie between 0 and 1 and similarly the value of y 1 should also lie between 0 and 1. So, this expression tells us that if p 1 chooses x 1 is equal to 1 by 5 why is that? So, 
x 1 is equal to 1 by 5 yani ki this term. So, if the p 1 chooses x 1 is equal to 1 by 5, he will ensure that his expectation is at least 17 by 5. Why is that so? Because this first term will become 0 and it will be left by you will be left by 17 by 5. Uh, he cannot be sure of more than 17 by 5 because by choosing y 1 is equal to 3 by 5 p 2 can keep expected value of x comma y down to 17 by 5 17 by 5 sorry that is 17 by 5. So, p 1 should settle for 17 by 5 and play this strategy that is x naught is equal to 1 by 5 and 4 by 5. Remember uh, the sum 1 by 5 plus 4 by 5 should be equal to 1. Now, p 2 should reconcile to minus 17 by 5 and play y naught is equal to 3 by 5 comma 2 by 5. So, this is the same argument and accordingly sorry that should be 17 by 5 that is a typing mistake. There are these are the optimum strategies of p 1 and p 2 and the expected value of the game is 17 by 5 and x naught y naught is the strategic saddle point of the expected value of x and y. So, x naught is given by 1 by 5 4 by 5 and y naught is given by 3 by 5 2 by 5. So, these are the uh, x naught y naught is the strategic saddle point of the expected value e x comma y. So, now let us come to the theorems of matrix games. The theorem says that let a be a m by n matrix and let p j and uh, q i where j goes from 1 to n and i goes from 1 to m be its column and row vectors respectively. Then the following two conditions hold that is number 1 there exists a y in S n such that this condition holds q i y is less than or equal to 0 for all i or the second condition there exists a uh, x in S n such that x dash of p j is strictly greater than 0 for all j. Please note the way in which the matrix multiplication has to be performed depending upon the way uh, the number of columns and the number of rows are matching. Here x belongs to S m is the mixed strategy of p 1 and y belongs to S n is the mixed strategy of the player p 2. So, the fundamental theorem of the rectangular games for a m by n matrix game both max x maximum over x minimum over y expected value of x comma y and minimum over y maximum over x expected value of x comma y exist and are equal. Thus, every matrix game has a value and an optimum strategy for the each player. So, this is a very important result in the game theory uh, which says that every matrix game has a value and an optimal strategy for each player. Now, uh, let us uh, look at it at uh, little closely maximization over x minimization over y expected value of x comma y is equal to minimization over y maximization over x expected value of x comma y is a necessary and a sufficient condition for a point x naught comma y naught where x naught belongs to S m and y naught belongs to S n to exist such that the expected value 
of x naught comma y naught is equal to maximization over x minimization over y expected value of x comma y is equal to minimization over y maximization over x expected value of x comma y and the expected value of x comma y naught is less than or equal to expected value of x naught comma y naught is less than or equal to expected value of x naught comma y for all x belonging to S m and y belonging to S n. So, therefore, uh, x naught y naught is a strategic saddle point and uh, expected value of x naught comma y naught is the value of the game and x naught and y naught are the optimal strategies for the game. Equivalently, uh, the following can be uh, looked at the following equation holds uh, expected value of uh, xi, xi naught comma y naught is less than or equal to expected value of x naught comma y naught is less than or equal to expected value of x naught comma uh, eta j and where uh, the uh, x i's are, are going from i is equal to 1 to m and eta j's are those where j goes from 1 to up to n are the pure strategies. So, every matrix game has a value and an optimal strategy for each player. So, this is a very important result. Right. So, now let us come to another interesting concept. It is said to be the concept of the dominance. Now, sometimes a row or a column in the payoff matrix of a game is uh, obviously ineffective in the influence of the optimal strategies and the value of the game. What does this mean? Let us take an example to understand this. So, suppose we have the player 1 who has the 3 strategies p 1, 1, 2 and 3. So, p 1 has 3 strategies 1, 2 and 3. Similarly, p 2 has 4 strategies 1, 2, 3 and 4 and the payoff matrix is given uh, 4 minus 8, 7 minus 2, 3 minus 9, 2 minus 3, minus 2, 6, 8 and 2. Now, what do we find? We find that 4 is greater than 3. Look at the first and the second row, 4 is greater than 3. Similarly, minus 8 is greater than minus 9. Uh, we are looking at the first uh, row and the second row and also 7 is greater than 2 and minus 2 is greater than 3. So, this is uh, a special case where we find all the entries of the first row are greater than rather strictly greater than uh, the corresponding entries of the second row. So, in row number 1 and 2 for every j a 1 j is greater than a 2 j and whatever the choice of p 2 p 1 will do better by choosing i is equal to 1 rather than i is equal to 2. So, therefore, the second row uh, should not play any part in the strategy of p 1 that is the probability associated with it should be 0 and the solution of the above game would be the same as that of the following game. So, we can just forget about look at this matrix. So, now this the given matrix has been reduced to this just these two rows 4 minus 8, 7 minus 2, minus 2, 6, 8 and 2. Let us look at the given matrix. So, this second row could be easily deleted because 
it is ineffective. The first row is dominating the second row and therefore, we can remove the second row and resulting matrix that we get uh, of the payoff is the following. So, this is the concept of dominance and using the rules of dominance, we can reduce the given uh, payoff matrix into a smaller dimension. This will help us in solving the uh, finally, the uh, solution of the game. So, some of the rules for the dominance are as follows. Number 1, for the player B, if each element in a column is greater than or equal to the corresponding element in another column in the payoff matrix, then the column C R is dominated by the column C S and therefore, C R can be deleted from the payoff matrix. In other words, player B will lose more by choosing the strategy C R column than by choosing the strategy for the column C S and therefore, he will never use the strategy corresponding to the column C R. So, therefore, C R can be ignored. Now, the same kind of rule uh, also holds for the player A. So, the number 2 rule says for the player A, if each element in a row say R R is less than or equal to the corresponding element in another row say R S in the payoff matrix, then the row R R is dominated by the row R S and therefore, the row R R can be deleted from the payoff matrix. In other words, the player A will never use the strategy corresponding to the row R R because he will gain less by choosing this such strategy. Rule number 3, a strategy say k is said to be dominated if it is inferior that is less attractive to an average of the two or more uh, other uh, pure strategies. So, here is another very interesting rule that is the average. In this case, if the domination is strict, then the strategy k can be deleted. So, if by strict it means that the it sh there should not be equality. So, if the strategy k dominates the convex linear combination of some other pure strategies, then one of the pure strategies involved in the combination may also be deleted. So, this is also another trick to reduce the larger dimensional game to a lower dimensional game. Note that the rules or the principles of dominance are applicable when the payoff matrix is a profit matrix for player A and a loss matrix for the player B. Otherwise, the rules will be reversed. So, uh, this has to be kept in mind that these rules are corresponding to the case when uh, the A is the maximizing uh, player and B is the minimizing player. So, A is the maximizing player and B is the minimizing player. Otherwise, the rules will be reversed. So, let us take another example. Uh, we have this two player game, there is a player A and a player B and uh, the player A has four strategies to choose from that is A 1, A 2, A 3 and A 4 and similarly, uh, the player B has four strategies to choose from that is B 1, B 2, B 3, B 4 and we will see whether there are any uh, cases where we can use the principles of uh, dominance and reduce this matrix. So, it is clear that there is no saddle point. Uh, you can just check it, uh, here the minimum is 0 
here it is 2 0 and 0 and uh, the uh, this is the minimum so the maximum is 2 and similarly uh, the 4 4 and 4 these are the uh, maximums the column maximums and uh, you can see that the minimum is 4. So, 4 is not equal to 2. So, there is no saddle point. Now, for the from the point of view of the player A the first row is dominated by the third row uh, yielding the reduced 3 by 4 matrix. How is that so? Just look at it. Uh, the first row is dominated by the second row. So, therefore, we can strike off the first row. Please you can check this and similarly uh, in once the, the 3 by 4 matrix has been obtained uh, in the reduced matrix from the player B's point of view first column is dominated by the third column and thus uh, we will delete the first row and then the first column and the reduced uh, payoff matrix is obtained. So, here this is the first row that has been deleted and also uh, the first column has been deleted. So, now we are left with 4 2 4 2 4 0 4 0 8. So, we are now left with this matrix. Next uh, none of the pure strategies of the player A and B is inferior to any other strategy. So, now uh, the first rule of the dominance cannot be applied. So, we cannot further reduce the size of the game using the rule number 1 and rule number 2. But wait what happened? We find that the average of the payoffs uh, due to the strategies B3 and B4. Uh, look at the strategies of the average uh, of B3 and B4. So, 2 plus 4 by 2 B3 and B4. So, this is 2 plus 4. So, 2 plus 4 divided by 2 uh, and similarly 4 plus 0, 4 plus 0 by 2 and 0 plus 8 that is 0 plus 8 by 2. So, what do you get? You find that these averages gives rise to 3, 2 and 4. This is 3 this is 2 and this is 4 and uh, now you compare this 3 to 4 uh, this is superior to the payoff due to the strategy B2 of the player B. This is the superior to 3 to 4 is superior to 4 to 4. So, therefore, the strategy B2 may be deleted from the matrix and the new matrix obtained is as follows. So, B2 can also be deleted earlier we had deleted the first row and the first column now we can delete the second column. So, now we are left with just this matrix. So, again in the reduced matrix the average of the payoffs due to the strategies A3 and A4 of the player A that is 4 plus 0 by 2, 0 plus 8 by 2 which is comes out to be 2 comma 4 is the same as the payoff due to the strategy A2. You can just check it 4 plus 0 by 2 see 4 plus 0 by 2 uh, this is 2 and 0 plus 8 by 2 which comes out to be 4. So, <coughs> this is what we have verified. Therefore, the player A will gain the same amount even if the strategy A2 is never used. Hence, we can delete the player A's strategy A2 from the reduced matrix and we can uh, get a 2 by 2 resulting uh, payoff as follows. So, now only this matrix is remaining because all others have been deleted. This reduced game has no saddle point you can just check it uh, you can see that this game also has no saddle point because uh, here it is 0 and here it is uh, 8. So, 0 is not equal to 8. So, there is no saddle point. Uh, in fact, 
there is an important uh, result which says that the reduction of the size of the game using the principle of dominance does not change the character of the game. By character of the game I mean whether there is a saddle point or not. Now, let the player A choose the strategies 3 and 4 with a probability P3 and P4 respectively such that P3 plus P4 is equal to 1 and also let the player B choose his strategies with the probability Q3 and Q4 such that Q3 plus Q4 is equal to 1. Since both the players want to retain their interests unchanged therefore, we can write the following uh, equations 4 P1 4 P3 plus 0 times P4 is equal to 0 times P3 plus 8 times P4 and this gives us that 4 P3 is equal to 8 times 1 minus P3 and that gives us P3 is equal to 2 by 3. And on the same way uh, 4 Q3 plus 0 times Q4 is equal to 0 times Q3 plus 8 times Q4 is gives us 4 Q3 is equal to 8 times 1 minus Q3 and this gives us Q3 is equal to 2 by 3. So, we find that the optimal strategies of the player A and the player B in the original games are 0, 0, 2 by 3, 1 by 3 and 0, 0, 2 by 3, 1 by 3 respectively. The value of the game can be obtained by putting the values P3 and Q3 in either of the expected payoff equations above and therefore, the expected gain of A turns out to be uh, 4 times P3 plus 0 times P4 which comes out to be 8 by 3 and similarly, the expected loss of B is equal to 4 times Q3 plus 0 times Q4 which comes out to be 8 by 3. So, with this we come to the end of this lecture based on some theorems and definitions related to game theory along with the concepts of dominance and their principles. Thank you.